Welcome to Dan's podcast. My guest today is uh, John Katsimatidis, a self-made billionaire who has a home in Quag. He's made many uh, investments and they've all worked out well. Uh, his first was in supermarkets and energy. He ran for mayor his most recent time also. And uh, he started in the media business by opening a, a Greek newspaper here in New York City, um, which I believe is that that's not only still running, but do you still own that too? Running it for many, many years, for 30, 40 years. And the, yeah. truth, the truth is she got tired of running it, so it's no longer in existence. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, uh, your latest venture is in the radio. Uh, you, you bought WABC, and I know you have a great show on it. And uh, I wondered which of all these... Uh, all these projects have you found to be the most uh, educational and interesting for you? And me and you were involved in uh, with Jerry Finkelstein, our, our brother, uh, right. and, oh, yeah. and uh, in, in your paper, Dan's paper, and then uh, we were involved in many, many other things together with Jerry. Uh, and I miss him dearly for he was like a, a father to me. And I learned uh, in the book that I'm writing, I talk about Jerry Finkelstein being a mentor to me and and like a father to me. And uh, I learned a lot from Jerry and about uh, smoking cigars and, and, uh, uh, and uh, a lot about politics. Uh, but uh, uh, lately, uh, I put WABC Radio, the most iconic radio station on the East Coast. Uh, and the first thing I did is hired Cousin Brucey. Because me and you grew up with Cousin Brucey and his music is still beautiful and still great. Uh, he may be 86 years old, but I gave him a 30-year contract. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I'm doing for fun, and by the way, we took WABC uh, from number uh, 28 when I bought it on March 1, 2020, to the top four in the whole regional area. Uh, why? Because we, we, uh, we invested in bringing people in that people want to listen to. The other part of the hobby of WABC, since I wasn't being able for some reason, even though it's in, it's in a lot of, very big in the region, Long Island wasn't getting a good signal. So we bought 107.1 in Long Island, WLIR, and it's soon going to be renamed, renamed WABC FM. Uh, and uh, uh, we carried a full line of... Uh, uh, of product from WABC, uh, except we do some local uh, uh, talk shows uh, that Frank McKay is running at, at 8 o'clock through Friday every night. And Judge Weinberg uh, uh, has a show on 4 o'clock the afternoons on Saturdays. So and the other hobby I've gotten is we, when the Yankees called me up and said, we want you to be our partner, we started a new minor league team uh, with the Atlantic League in Staten Island. So <laughs> I'm, I, 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 at our old age, that being you and getting older, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of things for fun. Uh, yeah. Getting the truth out of WABC. But I tell my reporters, make sure you get the truth out. I don't care if it's good, bad, or different. Just tell the truth to the people. That's all I tell them to do. And uh, I do that on my radio show. I have common sense Democrats and common sense Republicans. And let everybody fight it out around the round table instead of fighting it out uh, in the streets. And, I, and uh, we all get along together. And uh, I, uh, my common sense Democrats, uh, Governor Patterson is on all two, three times a week. Uh, Congressman Peter King for two, three times a week. Uh, and so we have, we have common sense, and that prevails. The Ferry Hawks, the minor league team that were partners with the Yankees in Staten Island. <laughs> well, it's the first year. We don't have we don't have 500 for the first year, but we'll fix it the second year because <laughs> we know how to fix things. Oh, you sure do. That's that's a, a trademark of what you you've uh, well, been doing. But every weekend, you know where I'm at every weekend? I'm out there with you every weekend. I enjoy, I'm, I, I'm a Suffolk County resident on Saturdays and Sundays every weekend. Yep. And uh, 
I, I love Suffolk County. I think uh, uh, it's, it's a great place to live. A lot of fresh air. I live on the ocean. And, you know, we, we did those apartments on Coney Island. And I put, contrary to what my, my lawyer said to me, no, you can't say that. I put in the commercial for Coney Island. You know what I put on, Jerry? I put in, and you breathe in that ocean air, I will certify you will live 10 years longer. <laughs> my lawyer said, you can't say that. I said, get the, get the lawyers. That, that law firm so sued me. So nobody sued me. But, but uh, they're welcome to sue me if they want. Uh, but uh, I do believe you breathe in that ocean air and that Long Island has fresher air than the rest of the city. And um, I'm there a resident. And I got so bored every Saturday morning in yeah. Southampton, we have a breakfast meeting, different people. And it, it ended up from a breakfast meeting for five or 10 people. The last breakfast meeting, we had 80 people. We had, had uh, 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 the... Uh, Army leader of the Congress, Kevin McCarthy, another week. We 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 have everybody, and the only problem is somebody has to volunteer to pay for breakfast. <laughs> well, I, I know I've been to that breakfast. I, I the most recent time, I guess, was a year ago or so, and uh, I had a wonderful time. It's it's a great place outdoors in a cafe setting, and. Uh, I think uh, I think you must. I think the most the thing that I see about you is how much you enjoy other people. Uh, enjoy people. Uh, I try to make new friends every day, Dan. You know, I love people. Yeah. And I used to love those sessions at the Yale Club, but we got thrown out of the Yale Club when me and Jerry and you came once in a while, and all the federal judges and all. The counsel to the president, uh, and uh, we just lost Andy Maloney. I don't know if you heard about it. Andy Maloney he used to be uh, oh. U.S. attorney in the Eastern District. We just lost him last week. So they were all having a smoke session with Jerry Finkelstein, Andy Maloney, Bernie uh, Newsbound. They were they they all they're all smoking up in heaven together. Well, as, as a matter of fact, when I went to the funeral of uh, of uh, uh, Andy Maloney, I said to his son, can we put a few cigars in the casket? They might need them. <laughs> and uh, what, are, what else are you looking to do? I'm looking to do, make a difference in our city, make a difference in our uh, country, and make a difference in our world. I believe in world peace. I believe that we have a problem right now with... Uh, uh, we have a problem in the city keeping uh, law and order. And I said to him, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. We need law and order. All the uh, politicians in Albany, for who else told eight and a half million New Yorkers that love New York and want to stay in New York and ride the subways and, and, and walk around safely? Or the 3,000 violent criminals that are preying on these people that have five indictments, 10 indictments. I said to the, uh, I said to law enforcement, I said to the, the, the uh, uh, assembly, and I said to the state senators, for whom did the bells tell? S safety for eight and a half million New Yorkers? Or safety, or, or why are you providing safety to the 3,000 violent criminals? The violent criminals put them in jail, and they don't belong along. Uh, they don't belong along with, with with common sense people that just want. They just want to live. We don't care about the taxes. If we're paying three times more taxes than the Florida pays. I love New York. Just keep New York safe. Put those three thousand criminals in jail. Otherwise, New Yorkers should not vote for people if they're not going to vote for our safety. If they're going to vote for the safety of the 3,000 violent criminals, let them, let them depend on voting as a violent criminals. What say you, uh, uh, Dan? I agree with that completely. Um, I, I, uh, we both live... I'm not complaining about taxes. I'm not complaining about any. I just want 
my kids to be able to walk around safely. Yeah, well, we both, you and I both lived in New York through a terrible time in the 70s and early 80s. And New York has come a long way since that time. Um, and I think it's, um, I think this business of having criminals let loose because we don't have enough room or courtrooms, it's crazy, it's just crazy. The last uh, few days, and the fact is, uh, they're sending up all the people that are crossing the border. Now, you know what, what, I, what, I, what I say? Let's take care of the American people. Let's make sure the American people are okay. Make sure the American people are educated before we try to take care of the people of South America, Central America, Africa, and the rest of the world. I think our politicians have an obligation. You know, we all have a heart. I believe in immigration. I believe, but everybody should be vetted. We're not getting, getting a health check and putting them in the same schools as our kids and taking the chance that our kids and the American kids are going to get sick. But don't you think that they should have an exam before we put them in schools with, with the American kids? Yeah, I think so. They should. Do you mean you agree on everything? <laughs> yeah, well... Are you, do you have uh, any more plans to run for office, do you think? And, uh, we'll see. Okay. I, I think that's what we have time for today. And um, I want to thank you for being on the show. And uh, we'll talk again soon. I have John Katsimatidis, the uh, great businessman from the city who's done so much with uh, many, everything he does seems to work out. And he is a good friend of mine, and I'll see you soon. I look forward to it. And, uh, don't forget, you're invited 52 weeks a year to that breakfast, and uh, I hope to see you soon at the breakfast, too. Okay, I'll come. Take care. See you. Bye.